Good morning. Hey, Joanne, how are you? I am tired and my brain is not the business. I <laughs> came to a conclusion that I can, I have arthritis where my, like, where I have migraines. <laughs> I know this sounds weird, but like my headaches start right before a storm happens and right now it's raining and my head it, it feels like when your foot falls asleep or your hand falls asleep in that numbing tingling electric like that electricity sensation that's what my head feels like around <laughs> the circumference and then yeah so the headache's not fun um <clears throat> happy march 27th i wear what the heck how did march march is usually a long month to me. March and August are always the longest months to me. I have no idea why, but this month flew by in like two weeks. I'm going to be at the So Whatever studio and we're going to be doing the Betty Bowler and I am really, really excited. Um, it's just so fast. It's so, so fast. And to think that less than two months, the wizardly and then three months away, we have um, the North Carolina retreat. I am like really excited for these seasons because I can't wait to meet everybody in person again. Some people repeat, some people brand new seeing them. Um, I'm excited. Yeah, it's raining over here too. Um, so yesterday we finished the narcissist um, pattern from Hollow Bag Creations. Um, I... I'm really happy we got to do this bag. There's all the bags that we do in on my Patreon platform. I'm always excited to do. But this one, I remember buying or getting the pattern because it looks so much like the Michael Kors Manhattan um, bag that I wanted to do it. I'm still going to make a bag that looks like it. I did it without, I, I kind of did the modifications where we didn't have to edge paint. But I definitely want to do one that looks spot on with doing it I have some ideas um I will have to adjust the main pattern pieces a lot for that so I need a little bit of time for that one but I gotta say if you're looking for a nice size roomy um box bag this is the bag for you um it is about 12 inches wide eight inches tall and six it goes from four inches deep to six inches deep it's a nice size and from what I've been told is they have different adjustments like where you can make the flap into like bat wings and whatever. So we did some things a little bit different. This is the bag we made. So as you can first see, we added a really cool strap detail. We added like just decorative straps because in the Manhattan one, they have straps and then they have little Chicago screws or rivets there. We changed the um, the tongue of the flap. Oh, thanks. We changed the tongue of the flap. The one in this bag is more rounded. Um, I showed how we took it from a regular block and we changed it. Another thing we changed is instead of having the flap attached to the back exterior piece. We have it just sewn on the back. There, as you can see, there's no, no hardware on the outside, similar to the Michael Kors. There's just name tag. I had to get fancy with that because I am all out of name tags right now. And then we had some fun with the inside. Now, the bottom of the bag being the same as the flap was pure accident. You have to be in Patreon to see what happened. I'm notorious for missing at least one pattern piece every single time. I am far from perfect, but it always, I always let things play out because sometimes things being missing needs to happen for something better to happen. Um, and so I didn't have the bottom piece, so it looks really cool that at the bottom of the bag, you see this, it's the vinyl. So we have a zipper pocket on the side that's also a slip pocket and then we also have a regular zipper pocket and as you can tell on the sides of the bag that's where the connectors are 
So we had some fun with this. It didn't take a very long time to um, put together. I thought it would for sure take a long time. We have a nice placement for the handle up here. Um, but this bag was really fun putting together and I had a absolute blast. Um, we didn't do the binding method because although we love the binding method in Patreon, I know sometimes people ask for alternate ways to make a bag other than binding. So we, we made it a birth in method, but you can definitely, um, you could definitely do a drop in lining for this bag very easily. Um, we had a lot of fun. I really liked how the narcissist came out and I think that it looks very classy with the the modifications the bag's beautiful without the modifications but with the modifications we kind of just gave it more of a micro core look i i definitely um i definitely love this flap <laughs> let's see oh yeah it's it is the ides of march thank you for subscribing thank you yep Oh, see, we're all getting history lessons. What? Yeah, the Ides of March. March always seems like such a long month, too. Hey, Leslie. Good morning, Arnetta. Hi, BJ. Hey, Christine. So, yes, this is what we finished yesterday, and I was so happy with it. I'm really pleased with it. Um, we did some really cool details, but I got to say, I like the birthday method. <laughs> I absolutely love. I had to come back and put this on. I didn't punch the holes well enough if you were in the group yesterday. So once I repunched the holes, this came on easy peasy lemon squeezy. I took some a baby wipe and wiped off all the chalk. And that is the inside of the bag. I think this is the coolest inside of the bag I've ever had. I think that I'm going to start putting like the faux, whatever the main exterior faux vinyl is on the bottom of the bag. Because that is just a very like... Just like when you look inside the bottom of the bag, it has like this really cool print. That is, I never really thought of doing something like that. But for boxy bags, I might do it. We also changed this around so that the side connectors also had the same like faux leather exterior around because, or the same matching exterior because uh, the other one didn't do. I did not use foam. I used Peltec 71. <laughs> I am the most, <laughs> if you want to follow someone that doesn't follow the rules because she doesn't believe there's rules, I'm that person. I don't think Peltec 71 is hard to turn and I actually think it works just as well as foam and I like it a hell of a lot more <laughs> than the light because I'm all about basting and I never get any wrinkles with it. It's super firm, but yet then I can still scrunch it and it'll bounce back to its shape. So... <laughs> They could tell you, if you were in my Patreon, you could tell them how much I squished that bag yesterday. And you see not one wrinkle on the bag. I love Pellon. I think that you could use it for a lot of bags. I've been using it in my Annette commuter for a lot. And if you're on Patreon, you know I use Stiff Stuff or I use Pellon 71 all the time in lieu of foam or heavy stabilizers because it just works really well for me. Um, I'm a, I love Pellon. I do. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> I love Pellon. Yeah, I love Happy Mistakes. I, I could have sworn, and I was even looking for it this morning. I was looking for the bottom, because the bottom was going to be this uh, beautiful turquoise green. And I believe this is, this water-resistant canvas is from Emmeline Bags. Um, I was looking for it. I was like, where is it? I want it like, it's just like a pop of color. Cause this is Dr. Who, his name in his language. And I want it just like a pop of color. So I picked the, the green and I was like, it's going to look so pretty. But then when we went to putting together, constructing the lining, all of a sudden it's missing. I had enough of the exterior. So I decided to put it on the bottom of the bag. So I'm going to get, I, whoever gets this bag, and who loves Doctor Who? I hope they appreciate all the little details that went into this bag. My favorite theme is also just like how we connected the um the straps to the flap. We did a lot when I look at this bag, we did a lot more 
modifications than we normally do. I try to usually only have two to three modifications so it's not overwhelming, but the flap alone has like three details that we did on it. Um, so we did quite a few. Um, I've been really into having a zipper pouch pocket and I even gave them my some ideas about how you can put snaps instead of sewing this down where you could take this out and have this as like a date night thing and then snap it back in and have it regular into your regular bag. So if you've been looking to, if you've been wanting to go on to page, like do my Patreon, but you're like, what do you do exactly? We, I get permission from the designer first and foremost. I will not, I will not uh, modify a bag that I don't get permission on. It's just, that's bottom line. I trust and I respect designers too much to do something behind their back. That's just, that's not who I am. So I get like last month we did, um, uh, not a thread co's, uh, Tuesday toe, but we made it look like a, I forgot the name of the bag, but it has all these zippers in the front and cool details in the inside and very simplistic on the outside. Um, I get patterns and I make a mock-up with modifications I think will look good or like I'll read through comments through in our Patreon group of things that people would want and I go from there. I know with the Narcissist bag a lot of people want to emulate the Manhattan bag for Michael Kors and although it's not dead on because I didn't do the edge painting which I will be doing eventually it has um it has the feel of the Michael Kors um, Manhattan bag. It's very boxy. It has straps and then it has like really cool weaving techniques and whatnot. And I gave, I give alternates. So if you're looking to expand your repertoire and you want to be like, Hey, I want to make a bag, but I don't know how to modify things. This might be a platform for you. Um, not only do I, I really try to show you how to do it so that way you can learn how to modify things yourself. Like we modified the flap. The flap is not round, so we took it back to its original size, which the measurements are, thankfully are on each pattern piece. And we played around with it and we figured out how to make this flap so that way the corners pop out precisely and nothing is, um, nothing is, like lost or like not poked out. So we had a lot of fun. I, at least I know I did. And you, I, you learn different things from me, different skill sets each time. So we have a, um, a voting system. So what today we'll do today or tomorrow, I'll put like probably a picture of this bag and everyone puts like cast their votes, cast their thoughts about what bag they want to do. Um, there's a winner. I reach out to the designer to see if I can one get a get permission to teach the class as long as everyone that's in this class has the pattern and um and sometimes designers are really sweet and they give a discount uh to for the pat for people to get the pattern and that's what we do whoa a portable walking foot machine for 75 bucks that is awesome those machines look so cool so cool. <laughs> I, I seen somebody make shoes with them, with one, like with Converse or something. It was really cool. Good morning, Margie. I use Nicophone. Yeah, I like Nicophone too. Um, actually, my favorite foam is from Cellrite but it's really expensive. There's a, there's a lot of different foams. I can go into a, I could do a whole hour lesson on different foams. Um, by Annie is the one that it, that if I have to get on the market, I get that because her formula is different from the shape flex one, um, shape flex foam. Um, naked foam's nice. Uh, it can drag even on an industrial machine. It can like drag down because there's no tricot or, um, anything to help it to be smooth to Flow underneath your machine well um there's legacy foam there is our foam there are so many different types of foams out there it's not even funny and each of them work good in certain types of bags like whenever i do um 
the Louise bag, the a barrel bag, I usually get legacy foam because it's something about that foam. The when it curves, like so when it curves like this, this area in this area starts to fill in. So I, I can't explain it. It just gives a better shape than by any foam. Um, maybe I'll do that around July because all these foams cost different amounts for different places. Um, uh, but legacy foam you usually can get from like sewing machine plus, um, there is Decaville, the Vis Visine has a version of foam too. And I know you can buy it from cereal bag maker. Um, there are so many different kinds of foams out there. It's not even funny. Celerate has pink foam that is one fourth of an inch three eighths of an inch and a half an inch and one inch because they make boats and their foam actually the bounce back on that is like a mattress. It is crazy how, how supple yet firm that foam is. Um, so there's a lot of different phones out there. You can have a lot of fun with it. I like to buy in bolts too. I usually buy, uh, buy Annie and bolt. But I haven't recently because um, the price of shipping went up and like the, she, it's like $85 USPS or uh, UPS. And I just, that's a lot of money right now. I just got done with the birthday and I have so many graduations. Hope is graduating from eighth grade, going into high school. Faith is graduating from high school, going into college. I just, I just, it's too much right now. Good morning. Good morning. Ooh, they're so right. Um, I know a lot of people that have the fabricator and also the portable um, industrial that has a zigzag stitch and they absolutely love the cell right. And they say they have really good customer service. They're within the US. Um, I If you're going to get a cell right on the marketplace, I would definitely call cell right first and ask them, do they cover the warranties when you buy them secondhand? Or is it only the person that bought it originally from them that the warranty gets covered? That's just something if warranties are big for you, which they are to me, um, that might be something that would you might want to know before you purchase. Thank you. I, I, I like the way the narcissist came out. Let's see. Yeah, you could put spray adhesive on it. You also can also buy Tricot um, that has um, that has adhesive on the back, and you can like kind of like make your own version of Shape Flex One Hundred One. Yeah, that ship is the shipping is really really high. I like the pill and stick foam. Only when I'm doing a drop in lining, nothing that I have to birth. If it's a portable one, just call sell right and ask them. I'm there is a there is a portable um, industrial machine on the marketplace, and I want to know if I purchase it from the marketplace, will the warranty still be valid on it? Um, some companies do it they're like yeah it's we stand by our machine other people are like no i don't know what this person did they could have like ran that thing through the ringer <laughs> so but i also love the fact that it has a zigzag stitch it is meant for for making stuff on sailboats not just like the um the cells but the actual cushions the seats the whole nine yards it's a very reliable machine i like it um i got to sew on it a couple times it would be a great machine to have I would, that would be the machine I would travel with to take classes because it is amazing. It, it's a, it's a, it's a beast. Um, it, it's a little brick and mortar thing. Um, it has some weight to it. So I, I, if you're, you're looking for an industrial machine, but you just don't have the space for the table, which is perfectly okay. That might be a, a very viable option for you. It is, they don't, they don't call it a semi-industrial, like, you know, how, the um, Brother 1600 or the Janome HD or um, the Juki QVB Mini are called semi-industrials. This machine is just straight up called an industrial machine. Um, 
So if you're looking for a straight up just industrial machine, not a, no semi attached to it, that might be a, uh, one for you. I know a couple people that have it and they've never complained about it. Um, there's tons of videos on it. Cellrite is in different parts of the U.S. And from what I've been told, they have just as good customer service like Juki does. So that's just something to think of. Um, sometimes I think when you watch videos, one of the reasons why I don't go off and be like, yes, I got these scissors from Kai or this pin from Bic or whatever is because sometimes I think people want what they see you have because they think they can achieve the same thing that you're doing. And that's not necessarily the case. Um, when I bought my industrial machine, I, I, I wanted a certain industrial machine, but the more I talked to um, Steve from Sewing Gold, um, the more I realized the 15, um, the 1541S is perfect for me. One, I'm a clumsy and I, I have jammed this, this, that, this industrial machine more than I want to admit. I am not perfect. And but because it has that reset button, it was perfect for me because it was okay for me to make mistakes because there was a reset button, if that makes sense. Um, I got to know this machine really well. I have replaced belts on this machine. I have replaced the servo motor, motor on it. I have done everything. I can like, I feel like I could talk about this machine like dudes talk about cars. Like <laughs> I am pro on this machine. Um, then the 5550, the 5550 is the same as the Juki QBP Mini, kind of the Janome HD. It could do a lot of different things with just different plates. Like there's a heavy plate and a light plate. And I got to ex explore a lot, again, working with Steve from Sewing Goal and messing around with it. That has become one of the machines I do the most tutorials on. Um, I don't get to do a lot of tutorials on my free on the 1341. Even though I love doing it, it is just in a very awkward area where when I put a camera, I barely have any elbow room. So I just sew on it usually and you guys don't see it. But um, do research on the machine you want, but based on what you want and not go with the masses. Go with what will work well for you. Look at customer service. Look at warranties. Look at if something goes wrong with your machine, how much would it cost for a repair guy to come out there? I had somebody tell me that they're 1541, not 1541S. I have an S on mine because there's a safety button. Got jammed and they had to pay somebody $300 an hour to fix their machine. Luckily, they fixed it in 90 minutes, but I I don't have that kind of money. I just don't. I have three kids. They all have extra activities. They basically, my job pays for everything my children want to do from viola, violin, to cello, bass, to karate to um rainbow alliance clubs <laughs> to black student unions hispanic student unions to track and football i pay for all these things with the money i make so there's no way i can just be like here is 450 dollars <laughs> for my machine so the safety was really important to me so look for customer service juki is i can vouch for juki's customer service with a semi-industrial as well as an industrial, I got my industrial through Sewing Gold um, from Steve. He's amazing. He will talk to you about industrial machines, even if you don't purchase one from him. Um, I had a Juki QVP Mini, and the the Aussie guys in Florida were amazing. I had issues. They I they walked me through. They did FaceTime, and when we weren't able to fix it, we they sent a box. They sent the shipping. It got fixed within two weeks and came back to me. Things like that mean the world to me. Uh, so please, please, please um, do your research. Don't go off of the masses. Go off of what your gut is telling you because nobody's going, the masses are not going to repair your machine. The masses are not going to teach you how to do your machine. The masses are not going to be there at the moment that you want to throw your machine against the wall and quit. So go off of what you want and research is key. Yep, Julie, high five, fixed budget. <laughs> yeah, headliner foam. Yeah, I usually like, okay, so you can get like tricot um, cotton webbing or the stretch webbing. 
and it's adhesive on the thing and you can make your own flex it flex foam and it's actually cheaper than getting flex foam it's really weird and then you can actually do it a little bit more cooler because you don't have to waste as much if you know that the naked foam is going to be on the top like this is the fabric the naked foam is going to be here and you can place the tricot on the back so it could slide around onto the um on the bottom of your machine better you can ha have a lot of fun with it yeah and skip stitches could be anything like do you have your walking foot on it um do you have a hump jumper you know what's funny when i'm not looking for the hump jumper it's like always there i have two hump jumpers that i have on even on the 5550 because there are some areas that could be like if i was going over this strap i will just have my regular sewing machine then i'll put the hump jumper over this part and then keep going um i believe in having the hump jumper even if i don't think i need it because i don't like skip stitches i don't know anyone that's like yeah my skip stitches in the bag was awesome no one likes skip stitches if they do side eye them bombastic side eye no one's like yeah skip stitches are sexy <laughs> um so just if you are looking for something new um go into the groups there's juki groups juki industrial groups there's cell right groups there's different groups on facebook um go into reddit go into videos people do videos all the time like this is my review on this machine listen to other people's review then hop into the comment section because for sure you're going to hear people's different sound off like i love this machine or absolutely hate this machine this could burn in hades um <laughs> like do your own research because at the end of the day you're spending the money and you're going to have frustration with whatever machine you get you just want to make sure that you can find a community that has the same machine that you can work with or at least you have like um really great customer service that can help you you know overcome your hulk smash moments because trust me with this 1541s if i was able to like lift it over my head and swing it like the hulk it would have probably been broken like 18 times over <laughs> um i finally think i got in peace with it the last three years i think i have had this machine for six years um the last three years i really became like at me we're like one we're copacetic we're like it understands my moods i understand its moods i know what threads it likes what doesn't um and you just figure it out yeah very true like who my brother patricia my brother i have two i have my brother's an artist so I used to do this as a kid. I'm older than him, but when he would draw like Superman and Spawn and all these DC characters, and I thought if I would grab the same mechanical pencils as him, for some odd reason, I would draw like Johnny and I couldn't. I can't draw like Johnny. There's no way. So instead of appreciate Johnny's drawing and then realize that I have my own technique, it may not be as refined or dignified or beautiful as his, but it's still mine. I, you can have the same pencil as that person. It's the person behind the pencil that matters. It's That's why you hear me when you're sewing with me. I'm like, get to know your machine. Figure out that curve. Figure out like the flow of your machine. Get cheap materials and practice makes progression. Um, you got you you just got to get into that um, feeling. You can see even the best people, the best in our business. Um, there's like video of Nancy Notion, like coming to somebody else's studio and sitting down and using another machine other than like her Bernina that she used to use. And she would have like some hesitation and reluctancy. And that is Nancy Notion, Nan rest in peace. She so longer than I've been alive. And <laughs> she had reluctancy on a new machine because it's a new machine to you. It's a we don't know how it's going to go. Like when you first get a car, even if it's a secondhand car, it's new to you. So you don't know how it's going to work. So do not think because this person has this lighter, it's going to burn every single thread. It does not work that way. That person who has this lighter learned its like quirks, learned its curve balls and its faults and its progression. So pick things that you think will work for you. There's no wrong or right answer. It's just in how much effort you want to put into it. Yeah. Yeah, never even. 
<laughs> I'm really bad at changing up my needles. I know I need a needle change. Like I'm supposed to change for me, honestly, I know I need to change my needle every day because your needles only are supposed to sew for eight to 10 hours. And that to me is within a day. I sew about that a long or every one to two projects. So <laughs> change your needles a lot. Um, if you're having problem cutting foam, make sure you cho change your rotary blade. Rotary blades are expensive. So my best suggestion is get them when they're on sale and buy them in bulk because they're expensive. You quilted your thing and use Echo Cork from Home Depot. Ooh, that's good. I could do a foam theme, Diana. Yeah. I could definitely do foam. I use um I use the stick foam, the sticker foam for putting down um tile. For my um, when I do drop in linings, no one ever believes me. It's really hella che cheap. It is so cheap, and I've never had an issue with it coming off or anything. But if it's good enough for the ground and it, it's not lifting up off the ground, then it's going to be pretty good for a bag. And it's light. I try to have lighter foams because I get shoulder fatigue, and I don't like the bag weighing a lot. That's the reason why I like foam. That's the reason why I like Peltex too. Peltex weighs significantly less than um pelon um i'm um, not pelon but um decaville light and decaville heavy those two things weigh a lot yeah vinyl flooring on lows yes um you know who else used to do that who does that too is uh sewing patterns with mrs h she likes to use unconventional stuff for um bag bottoms I, it just, it makes it a lot more easier. And I actually like when you can get things like at a Home Depot or a Lowe's or a hardware store, because that means it's readily accessible. I Meaning if you're like me and you run out, you can just go down the street, grab some stuff and call it a day. I, oh yes, Basel works good. I like Basel. I like our foam. Our foam and Basel usually are sold, sold from Amazon. It is very, it's interesting. It doesn't, um, when I do a scrunch test where like I ball it up and roll it, it takes a longer time to inflate into its regular form than Legacy um, uh, or by Annie. I use a lot of foams. I If you're coming to my, um, to sew whatever one, I encourage you guys to bring foam. I think you will rock your roll, rock your world because somebody's going to bring Decaville Light. I will make one in Decaville Light if no one does it. And when you hold up a Betty Bowler, Bowler in foam and then using all Decaville Light, it is going to blow your freaking mind. We as bag designers have to think of health as well as functionality. Is it good to have a heavier bag for someone that may have like shoulder fatigue or recovering from a shoulder industry, industry or arm industry, um, in, not industry, but injury. So like, I personally like lighter bags so I can stuff more in it <laughs> and not worry about the weight versus having a whole bunch of Decaville heavy and Decaville light that are not, <laughs> are not light materials by all. If you don't believe me, just take a, some Decaville light and put it on um, a food, um, prep thing and look at how many ounces it is compared to foam and that's what you're putting into your bag um there's a reason why i'm redoing the swoon patterns and like updating them is because alicia always used foam and there's a good reason why um it's just it's because it's hella light which is better for your skeletal your muscles you carrying around a bag so just something to think about when you're doing this is that what do you what do you consider structure what do you consider not i made a lot of structure bags with foam um i also just made this bag which again i can squish it and it's going to bounce back this is pelon 71 we've been like kind of told these past couple of years that people don't like pelon but i always go back to the oldies but goodies and this is is something that I like. I like the fact that someone could squish this bag and it's not gonna have a wrinkle or a crease because there's nothing to adhere to it. So it's just food for thought, something to think about. Um, I definitely will do a um, update to my interfacing soon. I just have to 
collect different interfacings and they it can get really expensive. I like a lighter bag. I love foam. Okay. Yes. Oh, you met the Basel dude? Lynette. See, this is okay. So whoever is going to North Carolina, you, whoever, Julie, you're lucky. Lynette is like a wealth of knowledge. You guys, like if you go to the class, you need to just have a tete-a-tete -tete with Lynette. Lynette is like a wealth of knowledge that I, every time she tells me something, it makes me want to like wag my tail like a puppy because she just knows so much about so many things. And it's just, I feel so honored that I can call her a friend because she knows so much. It's like, I'm constantly getting educated and it, like learning about new things makes me excited. I know I'm a nerd. <laughs> so, but the fact I'm going to have to pick your brain. Jim Basel foam is amazing. It just takes a little longer to release back to its natural state. And that's the best way I can explain it. Um, by Annie's foam formula is a little bit different than everybody else's out there it bounces back immediately it kind of reminds me like a mattress um it, it's really cool no I didn't use any rosemary I know spray adhesive I I machine based the people on patreon scene I don't uh, know no you knew the thing is you can machine base and then take out the stitches um do a loose like a loose like a six or seven or whatever a loose basting and then when you get the pieces all together you can cut out or remove the basting stitch and then trim away all the excess that's in your seam allowance so it's it's just a little bit more work but it's worth it oh my god i'm i'm really excited about the fact that i didn't know his first name was jim i'm really excited about that <laughs> Um, you can use double sided tape, but yeah, I just based it. I don't know. I, I, I'm in the basement, so I don't use a lot of uh, adhesive spray stuff because man, it would be like ching ching chong up in here. I have no windows in the basement. <laughs> so, um, Kendall already thinks it's weird that I smell my double sided tape. So not trying to feed the fire. <laughs> yeah. So all you do is baste it on. Once you have all your four seams together, you can trim and then uh, trim the basting stitch off and then turn around and go individually with like duckbill scissors or whatever and trim the, um, the, the excess that's in your seam allowance I'll just, and you'll be fine. It's really cool. Um, I use it like I would do foam. I, I, I don't have any issues with it. As long as you have a wide berth opening, it, you're pretty much straight. <laughs> like this is a pretty structured bag and I we just left the bottom of the bag open and I just closed it up with the pocket that's right over here so I'm about to hop off and I'm probably going to bug my kids they're still asleep and or I'm gonna snuggle and take a nap with Loki I haven't decided yet <laughs> Um, and I will let, I'm thinking I'm going to be cutting out the Sandra. I'm hopefully I'm going to be filming the Sandra tomorrow. So that way you guys can have it for Friday. Um, I'm just wanted to see what small modifications I can do, like level up to make the Sandra more modern. So it doesn't have an order. Okay. <laughs> I might have to, I might have to try a 505. <laughs> um, cause I usually, what I would do is like spray stuff inside the trash can, but, um, <laughs> Yeah, the smell still goes in, in the basement like, for a while till I get a fan down here. Um, so, yeah, I will talk to you all. Um, you're filming me? Oh, no. Swoon. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, I'm still sleepy. I apologize. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to be filming that hopefully tomorrow. And I, I'm trying to figure out which one I'm going to do next week. I'm probably going to start next month. I think I'm going to start doing a poll because there's so many different ones you guys want to do. I know people want the Pearl wallet, um, uh, the Della wallet. Uh, there's so many different ones. They, they definitely want, um, the Frankie. A lot of people ask me to do the Frankie to like update it. And I have some ideas for that one because the closure on the Frankie drives me nuts. Um, <laughs> so I have an idea for that one though. Um, so I will talk to you all later. I hope everyone has a fantastic day and you're able to achieve whatever you want. If you're not, it's okay. We got tomorrow. I'll talk to you later. Bye.